Before we get into the 1000 day world tour, there are three things I wanted to mention. First and foremost, I am mining a vertical layer in Minecraft for every subscriber I gain until we break the world record for the most amount of blocks mined in a hardcore single player world. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and be a part of history so we can break the world record. Also be sure to share it with your friends. The second thing I want to mention is we do not AFK in this world. So all my time played is actual time played and we also don't use any TNT duplication. So anything that requires mining or a big hole or anything like that is all done by hand with a pickaxe. I will also go ahead and show you my stats. So as I scroll down here, you will see number of deaths is zero and time played is 13.5 days. I'm also gonna go ahead and show you my times of mind stats. We got 700,000 stone, 117,000 deep slate, and these numbers will only continue to go up as we work on this project behind me, as you see for every subscriber, finding a vertical layer from service to bedrock. So without further ado, enjoy the video, and I'll see you later. 1,000 days survived in hardcore Minecraft is no small feat, and I am here to show you my world tour. It is also the 1,000 subscriber special, so thank you all very much for all the recent support. So without further ado, let's get in to the world tour. So starting off in our main sorter here, we have our input chest in the corner. I've yet to design this little part here. Basically you throw in a full shulker box here. You've got a button on the back here which will activate and empty the shulker box through the system. It'll go into the water stream and get inputted into the chests of the sorting system. Down here on the bottom is all of the blocks to identify what block is in what chest as you can see here. And for example, on stone, where we have an excess, we have all of our normal blocks here. And on this last one, we have full shulker boxes. Now I am going to be moving these full shulker boxes of whatever block it is into these little triangular pillars down here. I also have another one right there below me. And in the last world tour, this floor wasn't done. As a matter of fact, we only had one row of chests going all the way down. And now, as you can see, it goes all the way around the whole system. Also on the top here, we have our blocks identifying what blocks are in the current row of chest. So if the bottom row gets filled, we have this top row here. So these blocks would be in this row of chest. We've got a little design on the floor here as well as our guardrail of anvils and trapdoors. I am not exactly sure how many items are currently being sorted in this entire system. I do know each wall, this long wall here, is about 300 blocks long, and these side walls are about 100 blocks long. So I think give or take a few blocks, you've got about 800 to 1,000 individual items sorted, and as you can see, it stops right there. So we do have quite a bit of open area to add more blocks in the future. You might be wondering what these armor stands are. I've got one there, and I've also got one down there. Those are for people who have donated to me during the stream, which is definitely not a requirement, but they have supported me from the start of the world and the series. So I like to thank them very much by putting a little monument of their character and their name of the YouTube channel as their name tag. Coming over here to the middle, I remember in the day 500 world tour, we had our naturally spawned diamond zombie in a little glass box. Now he is in iron bars being suspended from the roof with chains over a pit of lava, which I think is really cool. And if we fly right on over here, you will see we've got our staircases coming down. And we've also got this really cool lava chandelier type thing that comes down to a central point. These are my villagers that I'm currently just breeding for the villager hall, which you will see that here shortly. In the corners here, we've got some chest, and on this side, we've got bamboo, which is being produced. So, I don't use TNT duplication, so it's hard for me to create a wood farm. So, if I ever need a lot of chests or anything like that, this bamboo is really easy to craft into planks and then turn into chests. On this side, we have our sugarcane farm which these farms are just kind of like up in the blocks there on the roof. That way I get the blocks and don't really have to worry about an ugly farm or designing the farm. And since this is my main base, I'll be spending a lot of time around here anyway, and they will just naturally spawn. 
You might be wondering why this block's out of place. It's just because I've got this rail in place to transport the villagers from in there over to here, where they are going to be in a new villager hall section. I will take you to the side where I have my villagers currently. We've also got these little pillars, which look really cool, especially if I turn the shaders on really quick, the way the light uh, glistens off the quartz, I think is really cool. All right, so now we'll head over here, and on this side, we've got our Fletcher villagers, which I'm more than likely gonna end up trading these out because I didn't realize if you get these down to one stick for one emerald, if you trade a lot with them, they will realize you can easily afford the price, and then they will just slowly increase the price on you. So it kind of defeats the purpose of even uh, using zombies to convert them and get their trades down. Because if you just trade a lot with them, then they're just going to raise the price. Same thing over here with the iron villagers. It's only four iron for one emerald, which when you take into account how much iron we have from our iron farm, it's not really worth it to go through the whole process of converting all these guys down to one iron for one emerald. Because we have so much iron, they're just going to raise their price as well. And almost all of these villagers also start their trade with coal because we have a wither skeleton farm. So I wanted them to have coal just in case we ever get to the point where we just have so much coal we don't know what to do with it. We could always just bring it here and trade it for more emeralds. Right over here we have all of our enchanted book villagers. So efficiency 5, unbreaking 3, silk touch, fortune, mending, protection, fire protection and so on we've got a few others that are just random knickknack ones but these are all like the armor enchants and a few pickaxe enchants and on this side is where i'm going to have my sharpness five looting three sweeping edge three power five infinity punch and villagers of that sort over here we have all of our clerics which are the redstone trade that way i never really have to go mining for redstone ever again and all of these are basically just for redstone on this side as well, these are the quartz villagers, so we never have to go mining for quartz again. And they also give some interesting blocks like terracotta. Um, that way we don't have to go mining for that in a mesa biome. They also have brick trades, which can be good for specific types of builds. But as you see, almost all of them have a different type of terracotta, which is really cool. Over here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I'm thinking about putting more villagers with iron because I do plan on making a bigger iron farm and I will show you the one we currently have in this world. But I plan on making a bigger iron farm that way we can just have a bunch of emeralds and iron and I will show you that process here shortly. Right here is our little moss farm. I needed a bunch of moss for the roof of the farm which it's not turned on right now. Um, basically it's got a dispenser in the middle with a moss block and a stone generator if I can jump up here so this is a stone generator and there's pistons under here that push inwards and there's a moss block in the middle the moss block will be bone milled turns the stone into moss and then that water over there releases and pushes it all into the hoppers here some of it gets composted that way it's an infinite recycling of bone meal you also get a little bit of bone meal and a little bit of moss on this side as well is more hallways for villagers. In total, uh, if you take into account one, two, and three villager halls, we can hold 315 villagers in total. So eventually we will get there. Just it's obviously taken me a little bit of time because I can only do so much at a given time. Over here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's going to be uh, some kind of a storage room of sorts. Over here is our nether portal, which you can see has nether blocks kind of spitting out of it as if it, the nether's coming through. If you go through the nether portal, you have a little walkway here with lava walls, and this leads to our end portal. So on the floor here, it's kind of like a gradual transition of different biomes. Oh, we got a slime. So as we run down here, you'll see the floor transitions, different biomes and stuff like that, which I think is really cool and neat. And as we make our way around the corner here, uh, this room is yet to be fully designed, but we have our end portal. Now, right now it doesn't look anything special, but if I go ahead and turn on the shaders, the reason it's all black is because I wanted it to have like a void look to it. And on the floor is ender chests. Ender chests with black carpet give this, gives a good, nice little purple glow effect, which I really like. So if we go up here, we will run, jump, and glide into the end portal. 
And in the end, we don't really have anything too crazy or special. We've got a little Enderman farm, which is pretty simple. Just a spawning pad with an Endermite. They run into you, you kill them. And we've got a big tower of anvils. That way I don't have to replace them for quite some time. We also have all of our end gateway portals open because I needed a bunch of obsidian for the end portals of the floor of the end portal room. And... I did not want to mine 3,000 obsidian, which is this whole tower. This was the biggest tower, by the way. So if that's the biggest tower now, think of all those blocks mined down to that point, which was 3,000 obsidian. Took me a couple of hours. But I didn't want to mine all of that and then respawn the dragon just to have the tower rebuild itself because eventually I plan on getting rid of all of this obsidian as well as the entire end island, which is a project for another day. But that's why we opened up all of those. That's why we've got our beacons in the middle and everything like that. So we will go ahead and go back to our main base here. And that is going to be all for this main area here. As you see up top here, the roof is all moss. It is yet to be finished. But on the ceiling, I kind of have plans for like strips and rows of like leaves with glowstone and have like vines hanging down as well as glow berries just like this little design that I have all along here which I think we've come a long way since our last world tour which was like I said just the row of chests on this wall and a little bit here so since then we've added all the chests completely all the way along the floor as well uh, the middle point and all the decorations for this walkway as well flying up to the top here this as you can see is decorated as well so our base is just in the side of this hill so as you can see our base is in the side of this hill i've yet to do anything with this vertical upside down v shape which i will end up doing eventually but for now this works just fine and dandy i also plan on having little walkways that go across here for getting from one side to the other and I also wanted to do something really neat and cool for the lighting up here. As you can see, I'm still waiting for the grass to spread everywhere, which is taking quite some time, to be honest with you. And we've just got some hanging lanterns on chains with a bunch of oak trees all planted around and things like that. As well as the water that is flowing down, I plan on digging into a spot somewhere on all of these. Now I don't know if I'm going to make four individual rooms or if I'm going to do a big rectangle just like down there where it all connects around, but I think it would be really cool to have like a little hidden entrance right there that you can fly through in the water. As well as right here is nothing special. This is just the too tall area that I dug out to be able to place the bone meal and turn the whole ceiling into moss. And this storage room here obviously has a lot more work to be done as in adding more blocks over there, designing the ceiling and things like that. But that is all we have for up here right now. Now we're going to move on to this area that is just down here. Obviously it is yet to be designed, there's no lighting so we do have mobs that spawn in here. I really like this lava entrance thing here, or this lava staircase we have here. I do plan on like adding some secret chests under here or something like that, I think that'd be pretty cool. And I'm not sure how to design this yet because I think this looks really ugly and um, not too sure exactly. But down here I'm going to have like rows of chests. And this is where my full shulker boxes of those individual items are going to be. So I got to have a double chest right here and it would be filled with just shulkers full of stone, for example, or just shulkers full of cobblestone, for example. This is my, I call this the aquatic tunnel. I plan on doing a longer tunnel connecting more rooms off to the sides and whatnot. But this is one of my favorite builds that I've ever really done in any kind of survival. The floor is made out of extinguished campfires. We've got spruce logs here with sea lanterns. We've got sea lanterns in the wall there. We've got sea pickles. We've got a bunch of tropical fish kind of inhabiting the coral and things like that. So as we run down this way here, off to the right is our plans to start like our main super smelter. So we've still yet to get along to that. And down here, as we keep running, now that we are at the end, as we come down this tunnel here, which is not that far of a flight away, I will take you guys up to the surface here, and we will look down upon the progress of our world record attempt. So for every subscriber we gain, we are mining one vertical layer from surface to bedrock. 
So as you can see, we are slowly making great progress. Day by day, we are mining out layer after layer, and we have finally accomplished 1,000 subscribers. So thank you all very much. Um, I do have some layers to mine tonight, but we've only got to do about 20 to 30 layers. So be on the lookout for that shorts episode later tonight. But yes, I'm very excited to get this project underway. As you can see, we've got two lines that extend out on each side. They go out 500 blocks that way and 500 blocks that way. So if we ever get to the point of having 250,000 subscribers, that is how big this area would be to mine out. So take that all the way up and over, all the way up and over, and that would be a gigantic hole. Now I'm not sure if that would even be the world record, so we are going to just keep an eye on that and see how things progress. Now with that being said, our main base is inside of here. We are going to fly over to our little starter base where we first started this entire world and we will go from there. All right, not that far at all. Our mountain is just literally right there. And here is our starter base. I've kind of added a few things since the last episode. We've got some bamboo farm here which i don't know if that was there earlier our automatic potato carrot farm some villagers that we no longer need that is our platform for the manual wood farm because we don't use tnt duplication in this world we've got a few villagers here which are just leftovers that we don't need anymore these got struck by lightning turned into witches we've got a few left bamboo farm like i mentioned we've got our potato carrot farm just the little storage down there and coming across to the other side of the island we've got our first iron golem farm which was a work in progress that i decided to abandon which it still works we've also got this little thing here which is where i had a beacon where i was using to farm up some blocks in these chests because i wanted to build and i just didn't have anything and if we go ahead and fly into this little tunnel here this is where everything kind of started. This was the storage room. So as you can tell, the one we have in our main base now is a lot bigger. Our first enchant table, which is where I still have an enchant table. It's the only one I have. We've got a few things in here, nothing too special. Down here, which is where I used for nether wart. And I guess I still use for nether wart because I don't really have any use for it right now. I'm not doing potions or anything. So let's try not to die as we fly down here and hit our head because that does a lot of damage as you can see <laughs> down here we have a zombie spawner farm which is just uh, one central point where the zombies fall down and you stand on a platform and kill them which is right there and down here is where we had our first little strip mine so nothing interesting at all but I want to make sure I showcase everything that way we can look back and see the evolution of the world so down here is still the same nothing too crazy here just little strip mines off in every direction to find diamonds at the beginning of the world. So now that we're back up on the stairs, we're going to go ahead and go through this nether portal. Now, I have changed the location of the nether portal just to simply put me on top of the nether. When I first spawned in, it put me right underneath the bedrock, and I will show you where that was here in just a second. So this is our little bee farm that we have that produces honey. I have no chunk loader here, so... I need to put a chunk loader in here so we can get this producing at all times. Now I do plan on doing some sort of nether hub because that is the starter base portal and that is the main base portal. So they're really close to each other and I want to do a big nether hub around the center of it. That way it's really easy to fly to with like a crossroads. So this is going to need to be moved. That way we can easily access the nether hub and be able to build it and that would obviously be in the way. So if I go ahead and turn on my shader so we can see here. Up here we have our zombie pigment farm which was showcased in the last episode. So up here we've got our access portal and we've got our zombie pigmen spawning portal. So here in just a few seconds they'll come through as I tell you about these guys. These were our special event zombie pigmen who spawned on Halloween. October 31st of 2023 was when I got these guys and they're kind of just chilling up here as I knew I was going to be building this so I kind of built this pin right here so that uh, it could just look good and here we've got a lava bucket to burn all of the excess items such as gold swords and rotten flesh and we've got a few gold blocks which we have a lot back at the main base and as you can see right there we've got some zombie pigmen flowing in slowly but surely and look at them all go now so you just kind of stand here you just swing away and they will 
just continually keep falling and falling and falling. So once again, I don't AFK in this world and I do not use TNT duplication. So the reason this farm is manually swinging the sword and not a big oval where all the pigmen come running to you and die is because I don't AFK. So this is a manual farm where you get more drops with looting three and that's just kind of how I choose to, to play in my world. So see all this junk we've got here, that's what the lava bucket's for. So we'll just go ahead and throw all of that out put our gold into the chest and now we are going to fall down here and we will show you that way later but I'm going to go ahead and fly this direction of torches to the wither farm and I will bring you guys back once we get there. Alright we are approaching our wither skeleton farm we've got our beacons to keep us alive over here we've also got our special event wither skeletons with the jack-o-lantern and the normal pumpkin so as we stand right here Wither skeletons will spawn on the platform underneath and they will come through the nether portal. Right here is where I keep all of the coal which I took back to the base and here we've got all of our bones and I have a couple blaze rods in here because we do get the occasional blaze come through here. So we'll go ahead and throw those out as we've got blaze rods in the chest right there and this is where we get a bunch of excess coal like I was talking about with the villager trading area. So if we ever get to the point where we have too much coal for a super smelter and we're or just have an absolute abundance of it then we will go ahead and start putting our coal into the villager trading hall to be able to trade and get excess emeralds there so as we stand here we get some wither skeletons spawning and you just stand here and kill the wither skeletons it's as easy as that i will fly down and show you how this thing works uh, pretty much the reason you build this up so high is around your player you have a sphere and that's where mobs can spawn. So with this platform and where the wither skeletons spawn underneath, it is perfect where like no other mobs will spawn besides on the platform that we built. So with that being said, look, we already got a wither skeleton skull there, nice. With that being said, we'll go ahead and fly down here and show you where the platform is and what I'm talking about. So we'll go ahead and walk down here. It's not very far at all, so as long as we don't get attacked by Mr. Skeleton there. So here's the platform, and as you can see, there's blazes, so that's why we get the occasional blaze. We've got an iron golem trapped in there, which encourages the withers to walk in the portal. And we've also got our uh, turtle eggs in the corners, which attract the zombie pigmen away and allows them to despawn. So if I ever need some blaze rods, we'll go right over here into this little box and we've got a blaze spawner not an actual blaze farm but a blaze spawner where i can get some blazes if we need them and that's pretty much all we have over here on this side of the world so pretty easy wither skeleton farm but it's also really efficient so we'll go ahead and fly back and i will now show you how the zombie pigman farm works because i realized i didn't show you that so let's go ahead and fly back and i will show you just how that works all right so as we fly back down our little pathway here you can see the zombie pigman farm up in the sky there so we will go ahead and drop down our little tunnel here so as we fall down we've got our little walkway which is where our original nether portal was and as i said i just relinked it to literally right above it so as we come down this hallway here, you will see the blocks the Endermen have dropped. But right at the end of this tunnel here is where the zombie pigmen spawn. So zombie pigmen spawn in these two rooms here. It's a super simple farm and they fall down there and go into the portal because there is a turtle egg in there. So zombie pigmen want to trample the turtle egg and as they try and walk through the portal, they get teleported out so they cannot actually get to the turtle egg and as I'm up there they're all just right on the perfect spawning level and as you can see we've got the piglins as well so that's what these are for in the corners here so when they spawn they will fall into these corners and drop down out of my spawn reach which is how they get despawned so we just keep getting more and more zombie Pigmen. And right down here, the only thing I have to show is a literal platform where the nether portal was. So nothing at all down in this area. And if I go ahead and fly this direction, we will go and see our raid farm, which I did show off in the last episode, but I'm going to go ahead and show it again, just in case anybody hasn't seen it. So if you go through that portal there, all it does is take you to a pillager outpost. 
So going through this nether portal here is going to take us to our actual farm. And this is also where our creeper farm is for us to get gunpowder. So right here is the raid farm. Uh, right under this glass we have our beacon effects so we can survive. This is where all of the raid farm mobs fall into. And they fall down into that hole. The ravengers die to the lava. And if we go on the back side of this portal here, we will drop down a little hole. And this is where all of the fun happens. So behind here, we've got a villager. He's the one that attracts all the raid mobs down into the hole. You collect all their loot here. And again, our beacon effects, that way we have strength, resistance, and stuff like that just to not die while doing the raid. And as you can see, this chest has the exact same loot in it as the last world tour video because I have a shulker box of totems but I haven't used any I think I've used maybe one totem since the uh, the last video so I'm not really going to be using a lot of totems so I don't need this and again I don't afk in this farm so I don't really have a need for a big stacking raid farm um, at least not yet so as we fly up into the sky here, I will go ahead and turn around and you will see the creeper farm. So these are just like spawn layers for creepers. There are snow golems in the middle that throw snowballs at the creepers, attracts the creepers into the middle, and the creepers will fall down onto this platform. So creepers will spawn here. You just hit them with your sword with looting three. Gunpowder goes in the chest. So if we just wait here for a couple of seconds, I will demonstrate that the farm works and we will move on to the next farm. All right, as you can see, we've got creepers falling down. So it does take a minute for the mobs to start coming through. But as you see, we are getting plenty of creepers. So I just stay here for about 30 minutes, killing creepers over and over again. And we get enough gunpowder for probably a couple weeks in just about 30 minutes of using this farm because we do have looting three. So just those five or so creepers, I will check the chest. We'll probably have a good, you know, half a stack. So that's not too bad at all for it being a manual farm. So we'll go ahead, fall back down here and go back to the main base. And I'll show you a couple more things. So as we came through that first portal there from the starter base, we'll go ahead and go through this portal here as I will demonstrate that it links to our main base that we have been working on for quite some time and as we go ahead and fly up through the top here i'm going to take you to the spawn chunks where we started the last world tour and showed off our shulker farm and our iron farm so as we fly over our starter base here which i showed you guys not too long ago we are flying into the jungle to our spawn chunks so everything is pretty centrally located Right here we have our shulker farm, and since these two farms are in the spawn chunks, they are constantly loaded 24-7. So even without me being here to AFK, we are constantly producing shulker shells, and we never have to worry about shulker boxes. So I emptied this um, a couple weeks ago, and it was probably up to there. So I emptied probably five to 10 shulker boxes and we're already getting filled back up yet again with shulker shells. So definitely a really good farm to put in your spawn chunks to just constantly produce while you're not even here. Same thing with an iron farm. Now I do plan on increasing the size of an iron farm and having a better one, but for this one being constantly working 24 seven in the spawn chunks, it's really pretty much all you need. There's not much more that you need because again, I'm not going to AFK an iron farm that I make that's bigger. So as you see, it's just iron because I do have an item sorter hooked up to it. Uh, there we go. So we do have, what is that? Three rows, four rows. So yeah, we've got just over three rows, almost four entire rows of iron. And as we come over here, we do have bone meal for days because as we go right here, we've got the iron that comes out. The iron will go and the poppies will get sucked out into these hoppers because of the filter. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know why this gets stuck here. What I think needs to happen is I might even be able to fix this right now. If I do that, 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 that. Okay, 
I'm not going to be able to fix it because these are going to get sucked into the hopper. So I'm just going to place this back. But what needs to happen is these composters need to go up and be right under that hopper. So we're going to go ahead and just place these back for now. And I will fix that at a later date. But we've got all of these. Let's see. I don't think there's any more. Yeah, there's no more iron blocks in here. But to access the back side of it, I just got to uh, gotta break that, place that there. And I have access to the entire back area if I need to fix anything or anything were to go wrong. So those are my iron and shulker shell farms. Really simple designs, but just work so well because they're in my spawn chunks and are just constantly loaded 24-7. No matter what I'm doing which is really nice. We've got villagers in there, three villagers per pod with a zombie in the middle constantly bouncing up and down to scare them and spawn golems. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pods and four zombies. So works absolute wonders. And with that being said, I believe that is all there is to show you in my hardcore survival world. So if you did enjoy, please be sure to subscribe like the video and share it as we are mining a vertical layer in Minecraft for every subscriber I gain until we break the world record for the most amount of blocks mined. As I said earlier, we also do not AFK in this farm and we also do not, we don't AFK in this world and we also don't use any TNT duplication. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. Thank you for all the recent support. Hope you enjoyed the world tour and I will see you in another video.